What's going on guys? Mitch, Native Survival. Heading into camp. I haven't been at this camp in, oh I don't know, several months. So it's gonna be uh, interesting what we find. That's my buddy Shane back there. Hey yo. It's walking through a forest on a path. Just saw a rabbit skeet past us. Scamp it over there somewhere. How you guys doing today? Hope you're getting out in the woods, having a good time, enjoying yourself. It's been uh, like zero degrees or so the last couple days. Nice and brisk. All right, guys. So now we're in camp. There's the living room. This is usually where I put my parachute. In that gap right there. It's a great living room spot. There's a wiki. I haven't been here in like 10 months. It's been a long, long, long time. Let's go check it out. I just moved the door out of the way. Someone's been in here. What is this? Original apple, applesauce pouch. Tobacco? Is that chewing tobacco or something? I don't know. Somebody's trash is in here. Come on in, bro. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. It's seen better days, you know. She's still standing, man. Yeah, 10 months, dude. I've been almost a year, and I haven't put any debris on. I haven't done anything. It's missing some stuff in the rafters. As expected, it settles over the years. The birch isn't really rotted or anything. It's still pretty good, man. A lot of birch you used, I see. Yep. Some pine, right on. Wow, that's a lot of uprights, man. Probably yeah, like 40, 50. But actually, the uprights, if you see, they're not touching. So I put um, lattice work in between them all, mm. and that greatly reduces the amount to hold back the debris. Because um, a lot of times in survival books and bushcraft books, I see that the saplings are touching all the way around that creates a really heavy structure, which is dangerous. Um, but it also forces like oh, 10 times more saplings to be used, you know? So I actually did this in a very, you know, economic uh, way that was better for the forest. Cause by doing lattice work, I have big gaps in between. Right. So I, I do about 10 inches in between each one. If not, then it's literally like they're touching. Imagine how many more saplings. You yeah. Know? Jeez, man. But yeah, there's still a lot of them here. Awesome. Little fire, fire pit. pit. Dude, you could probably sleep two or three people in here, I bet. Yeah, you could definitely sleep three people in here comfortably. Um, there's a bed on that side. There's a bed where we are. This is where I usually sleep. This is my bed. Right here. And then a third person could sleep in front of the door that way, lengthwise for sure, if you had to. You know. that's, that's a fire pit. Firewood still there, so that's cool. It's been there for 10 months, man. Some good burning material, too. Charred up. I think last time I was here in March, yeah, I did. I lined the whole bottom of my fire pit with rocks. Yep, I just dug inside the thickness of rocks and I cobblestoned it. I just lined the whole bottom with these small rocks that are about fist sized. So um, the fire was sitting on rock. Yeah. And then I made a single fire on it that day just to kind of settle it in and make it permanent, get the embers falling into it, get the charcoal burned into those stones. And then I left it. 
So next time I sleep in here, it's going to be even hotter. Hot rocks are the, are the key. Yeah, man. Yeah, anyways, this is the wiki. It's still here. Pretty cool. Standing strong. Yeah, I could still sleep in here right now. If Crazy, I want to. man. How's the smoke exhaust? Perfect. Yeah, normally I put the the uh, debris all the way to the to the top as high as I can get it. Um, the only place it isn't is in the very, very, very peak. And smoke finds a way out. Yeah. What a setup. On that side, it's 80% uh, covered, I'd say. And then over here behind me, it probably gets to maybe only halfway. So that side's facing the field, so it gets battered more, but more elements. So just hanging out at camp, checking it out. Got some work to do today. We have a native survival rendezvous coming up soon <clears throat> in March. So we got about a month or so. So me and Shane are here. We're gonna work on some, I don't know, some projects. Maybe work on the camp, work on the seating of the living room. We have a couple log benches out there, but probably gonna make a few more. Knife doesn't have any um, any shoulders or swells or anything, so it's uh, hard to yeah. hard to grab, right? Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Fall out really easy. Just get a brace that can hold it. That's my first knife. Dude, this is a great sheath, man. Sick. You know, Sandy made a uh, a sheath making video. Have you seen that? No. It might even be two parts, dude. It's like the Bible. It's the Bible. All the products he uses, in what stage, you watch him do it, you watch him dye the leather, you know, put the, the waterproofing on the inside of it so it doesn't stain the scale, and on and on and on and on. Cut it, everything from scratch, everything from start to end, how he makes his sheets. And you know, Sandy's sheets are so top notch. Yeah. He teaches you how he makes his sheets on his channel, on, on the Jackal channel. Let's Check it out. Second. Not not that you really need any instruction on it, but if you're looking to find more instruction on it, check out Sandy's videos. That's man. the second uh, sheath I made, and that knife I actually really like. I, I kind of uh, it was my first stainless steel knife. Yep. Again, nothing special about the handle, but I'm just gonna stand next to the camera. Hello, guys. <laughs> Shane is showing me uh, some of his trinkets and such. We're not even in the sun. You can't see anything. That's all right. It's secret. Is this a Genesis? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, ABL does it in 330 seconds, which is kind of what sold me on that knife. Yep. LT right, man. It's kind of a, what's this, like a burlap bag handle or something? Uh, yeah, it's made by Shade Tree. They make a um, coffee bag, it's called. Coffee bag. I'll give you guys a look. This is actually too nice not to. Yeah, it's like they took it um adds some grip. It's not super polished like some of the knives you see out there, but I don't feel as bad. Yeah. Dirty. Yeah, it's it's like um they took a burlap bag. The old coffee bags or um potato bags and um they compressed it in epoxy and made a handle out of it. 
That's cool. Yeah, I kind of like how uh, people can take pine needles, pine cones, I mean, and make, sh uh, make scales out of them for knives and stuff. Nice leather work, man. You did a good job. Thanks. Pretty sweet. This is my, uh, my terrible, the first whack at Amadou. Yeah, yeah. Amadou is hard to make. Yeah, it took me a long time. It holds a spark, but not super good. I find that um, our mushrooms around here don't make good amity. Yeah. I've tried for years to make stuff that I was happy with. This one's actually not bad either, if you look at it. Yeah. You oh, know, wow. Yeah. It took 24 hours of boiling that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> they make hats out of it, which blows my mind. Oh, Amadou. That's good, man. Still in the box, man. Factory fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still using my uh, my Gen One. You know, my normal man. NSK. <clears throat> I think I might have missed you striking the Amadou, man. Is that what you did with the flint and steel? I didn't hear it. No, no, I used Power rod? jute and fatwood. Jute and fatwood? Yeah. Oh, right on. With a, what, with a ferro rod? Yep. Cool. Let's say, I didn't, I didn't think I heard the flint and steel. I'm going to keep these guys parked, parked over here for now. Yeah. So, yeah, I was thinking, um, Make uh, two more benches. One Definitely. here, one here. Uh, maybe change the angle instead of having this one line up here. We're gonna, like uh, go this way instead. Yeah. So that rock is like behind a bench. Um, and the 45 angles will be what's open, how you walk in. Except we'll rotate the whole thing. Um, I want to get that done to make two more benches. I think I have some logs at the old camp still. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think if we knock just... Them, knock them out of, the, out of the frost and carry them over. <clears throat> exactly. And then uh, there's a couple large log rounds, you know, and I'll, I'll just, I'll buck up some, some legs or something. Um, Definitely, man. What do you, do you have a tripod <clears throat> still? Or do you want to knock one of those out? Or just do the benches? A cooking tripod? Yeah. Um, I do somewhere. Um, I know I have my my guide tripod down on my teaching camp yeah. down near the near the pond. It's like 15 foot tall guide, like legit, dude. You know. Metal? Um, I'm not. I, I don't think I want to carry it all the way. No, I don't know. <laughs> what are you gonna say? That you're gonna help me move it? No, I was thinking, oh. is it is it metal? I don't know. It's it's all sapling made. It's all made. Oh, right on. Yeah, it's Damn, like a dude. legit guide tripod. Yeah. Like, with the, you know, with you can the, have like the cross four buckets hanging on at the time, yep. like the classic <laughs> Tim Smith, like epic, you know. Yeah, my buddy Derek uh, taught me how to make them, and I'm like, yeah, I need one of those in my teaching camp. Yeah, man. But uh, thinking I'm a, I might move it up here, but it seems kind of crazy talk. So um, I had a little down and dirty one here somewhere. I keep, I'm looking for it right now. I can't find it. I thought I had it set up right there. So maybe whoever that person was that showed up, maybe they yeah. did something to it. Knocked it over or something to it. Yeah, maybe. Bandits. Literally starting a fire on, on ice. Yeah. 
I yeah. was like, should I try to get rid of this? So you know what? I'm just gonna put a base down. <laughs> I saw that dude. I saw that layer of ice. Yeah, I saw one behind your camp that looked sus suspect. I'm looking at that one right there. That's like 20 feet, 15, 20 feet. Looks like those little tiny trees stopped it. Nice. Yeah. I just, I literally like just collect birds. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, primo stuff, man. Take it out of a pond and start a fire with it right away. <laughs> exactly. Ring it out a couple times. <laughs> totally. Exactly. It's underwater, you take it out, shake it off, light a fire. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's where it's at. Throwing that fire dog in a little too early. She's just soaking, spitting water. Yeah, you know, it's going though. Create some good char to burn that. It was that oak right there that was laying there, kind of charred up? Exactly. Because it was freezing last time, so we're using a bunch of oak. Is that a craft line? The it's like the 511 craft line. Exactly. It's like a nine dollar knife. It's my pocket knife. Yeah, I Keep love my those things, man. Yep. Definitely. I'm gonna use this, okay? Yeah, man. Go for it. Sure. Let's make uh, make some stuff. That's a technical term, stuff. Yeah, it makes some stuff. <laughs> some oak stuff, some pine stuff. You guys wanna make some stuff? Need some stuff for your fire? Kind of seem like it's kind of all we do when we go in the woods. Just keep making stuff, right? Yeah, man. Spoons, cooks, fires, log benches, wiki ups. Just making stuff. Come out in the woods to make stuff, and you go home to use stuff. Totally. You could almost use that rock for a leg, huh? That one? Yeah. Maybe yeah. if maybe if we put the bench back and use lay lay something across. Like if you're gonna move the bench back, lay something across this and then maybe over the bench where it intersects this it's right here. Be a little bit higher, but sounds good. Yeah, plenty of down material.
Good quality stuff. Yeah, it was nice and dry. <laughs> it's not dry rod at all. No. It's a thousand little pinholes in it. Totally. Yes, this is my beater knife. Yeah, it's a good knife, a 511. Yeah, I hardly ever sharpen it. I cut through cardboard boxes with it. Just my beater knife, man. It's a good blade. I use it to cut uh, templates for spoons. Yeah. So after I draw them out in the shipping boxes, I carve out, carve through the cardboard boxes with it and stuff, you know? Cardboard's a good material for Then that. every, maybe like once a month, I'll put a fresh edge on it. Maybe, sometimes every other month. Very sporadic, you know? Yeah. Whatever. No big deal. A user. Oh, dude. Hard user. Like, if I have to cut through something that I would never use my knife on, I use that. <laughs> that's, that's that knife, you know? It's like, dude, you gotta roll your wrench. That's all right. Yeah. It's my beater. I'll roll it back. It's my pocket knife. Exactly. Just roll it back. Redress it. Put an edge. Exactly. You get it, man. I think everyone should have... I think everyone should have a beater knife. I don't think anyone should have a knife that they don't intend to use. <laughs> you know? Just an absolute beater. A knife that, like, you're not... You don't baby it. You're not scared of it. You're not... You know? You don't just look at it at home and polish it up. You know? We have polished knives, too. You know? I, I got a lot of pretty knives, but... Everyone needs to have a good beater. And a nine dollar Mora for me fits the bill. Nice Puka design and it's a nine bucks, man. Carbon steel. How, how, how do you go wrong with a nine dollar Puka with carbon steel? Nine dollars. You go wrong by not buying it. Yeah, it's nine bucks. <laughs> Guys, want to talk about gear? Let's talk about gear. Gear's fun, right? You guys like gear? What do I have with me today? Well, this is a backpack on the ground. This is my old stream. Here we go. <laughs> That's my old stream canvas backpack. A woman hand makes these in Maine. There it is right there. Epic. This is like elephant skin. Canvas, super thick. Uh, actually designed by my buddy, Derek, at the Woodsman School and Guide Service. He's a Maine guide. Um, awesome bag, LT right, knife box. Mitts. Military mitts, amazing. I got a bunch of stuff in here. Not gonna go through all my rig, but got a World War II E tool, a trenching shovel that folds up with the leather sheath. Never find them like that anymore. You might want to check out this uh, military leather sheath, man. I'll show it to you in a minute. If you want to see it, it's pretty cool. Anyway, so there's my rock. 
I have what I think is the best axe made so far that I've found. Designed by Mr. Raymond Mears. Lives in the UK. Famous bushcrafter. Called the Wilderness Axe. Thick pole. It's a heavy axe. It's 24 inches. It has his logo on it of his store. You can only buy it from him. But Grandpa's Brux makes it. Uh, my buck saw. Inside here, this is a gun sock. I just, you know, took off one of my shotguns when I first bought this, and then I just, I bought another sock for my gun later. Um, this is a gun sock, so it helps protect it, keep moisture away, things like that. But this is my Adirondack, no, it's not Adirondack, this is uh, Adventure Sworn, excuse me. Adventure Sworn buck saw. I'll show it to you sometime, I'll take it out. I'll be using it today. Anyways, there's lots of other little secret goodies in there. Oh yeah, Probably no, that, that came straight from Roswell. For <laughs> sure. That, uh, you know. Little green men brought it. Yep. I don't know, I don't know, uh, I don't know anything about it, but, but they're not going to get to look at it today. But, uh, so what are you running, man? Got a little, is that a little canvas ruck? What do you got? Yeah. This is a Norwegian Telemark ruck. Um, they, they've been called the Swedish Mountain Ruck. I'm not sure if a bunch of other companies their countries rather have used it um, but basically it's it's an ex-military ruck canvas two pouches on the side slips between the pouches I think they were meant to carry skis but I use it for my axe and my saw a little tiny zip in the gigantic uh, lid that kind of poses a problem sometimes steel frame leather and metal everything very sweet cool. pack telemark Telemark Ruck, Norwegian Dude. Telemark Ruck. You ever see that episode, The Heroes of Telemark, that Ray did? No. It's actually a series. He did um, he did several shows of his documentary on bushcraft. The Heroes of Telemark, look it up, it's incredible. He even has, um, he follows along with uh, the military. They uh, have guys go to the same hut that those guys stayed in. Um, and eat moss and ray was with them eating all the moss and all that stuff that those guys ate and they ate the same just to see what it was like yeah and they recreated you know what they did they skied the, like the, i think the same distance Amazing. everything just to see what it took to do it's, it's it's incredible dude you gotta check it out i think it's like a maybe a three-part series like three hours yeah it's pretty amazing Heroes of Telemark. Yeah. No, yeah. it's an awesome pack, though. But that's, yeah, that's a, kind of the name for it. A couple different packs like yeah. it. But... Do you know the story of, of the Telemark? No. Oh, really? So no. so the Germans had um, this, like, base in the middle of mountains. And they were trying to build um, hydrogen bomb up there. Circa. And they had heavy water and everything. Like when? <laughs> oh. <laughs> World War II? I'm like, No, circa... World War II. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, World War II. So the Heroes of Telemark were guys that got dropped off, like, I think by plane and just parachuted like into the wilderness way above dude just like arctic circle stuff and um literally like had almost nothing for gear and they just um i think one guy might have fell in the ice they, they did in, in, in the documentary on purpose he jumped in the ice and everything but um epic dude like they skied crazy miles they had to find this this base and then go in and try to disrupt it and or destroy it um, destroy the heavy water. One way ticket. Um, they made it out. Jesus. Um, super secret squirrel, you know. Yep. Operation, man. Um, yeah, watch the documentary. It's epic. No, it's that's epic. wild. I definitely would like to know more about those the origin did. of the name, you know. Yeah. For sure. It's incredible. What those men pulled off, they were, they changed the war because they're just German when the Germany Hitler would have had hydrogen bomb yeah which would have changed everything no that's awesome we might be speaking german today yeah <laughs> you know eating sauerkraut instead of instead of, bacon. Instead of cheeseburgers yeah. and bacon <laughs> and bacon eating sauerkraut yeah tell them off, man cool nice rock i like that looks good it's a nice looking bag yes it is I like that metal, that metal, uh, metal frame in the back. Yeah, I mean That's it's cool. not as light as aluminum, but it's, it's in good it's, condition, dude. Huh? Yeah. What I like about it is someone like clearly put their initials on here. Yeah. Um, and they actually, from what I understand, this I was like, man, did they break it and like fix this? 
but it's actually because this this pack was so heavy that you'd have to put one arm on unclip this and then grab this throw it over your shoulder and clip it on i wonder what they carried inside of it i mean based on what you just told me about that mission probably a ton of ammo right again these were for skis and i think the only difference between this one and the i think it's called the swedish mountain swedish mountain pack or i forget is that the this kind of lighter colored leather yeah. was a lot darker and that's how you know it's norwegian as right. opposed to swedish or whatever, whatever the other was, yeah. yeah they actually made a model pack after this too by a company called svoita i think it's it's pronounced um they make a bigger pack that has you know the lashing on the side to tighten it up and then they make a smaller yeah. pack that's just like this sure heavy yeah. pack but it's durable my oldest stream has that it has the uh yeah the lacings yeah, on the yeah, side yeah. Yeah, I so I can I can compress it if I want. Yeah, no, that's a that's an awesome feature. And I can bring both of these together, so it, it literally takes off like five inches of width out of that. That's a huge feature. You're essentially changing. I mean, you're bringing. You know, if you have a huge backpack and you're carrying just a little bit of gear, your center of gravity is way far out from your back where you want it to be. Now, if you're carrying just a little bit of gear and yep. you cinch that down, that brings your entire center of gravity closer to your back, so you're yep. not, you know, It turns it into around. a day pack. Yeah, exactly. It really does. Totally. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's some kind of rugged. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Good bag. And, oh, it's and he put handles on the side, too. You know how, like, the, the military rocks like the like the marine rocks, things like that. How how they have like the molly rocks have handles on each side. Yeah. You know to throw them throw them in and out of tanks. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a military dude. He did. He's yeah. been in the military for like 22 yeah. years or something. Sergeant. Yeah, or whatever right. it is. Yeah. And uh, I mean he's he's a big deal in the military. Anyway, so uh, we don't to get into that, but um, yeah. So he he designed that into his like old school canvas bag, the two handles, because it's just. Something that he, I, I'm assuming, found really useful. It's been ingrained in him. Yeah, he's just like, I need that handle. I need those handles there, you know. I may have to get inside of a tank. <laughs> Actually, what if I got to get in a tank? Dude, mm -hmm. do, I don't know if you know this. I don't know. Do you guys know this? When Derek went to Afghanistan, dude, when that when that guy went to Gan, he actually, are you there? There you are. Is that yeah. you? That's you. He actually brought a canvas ruck with him to Afghanistan. There's a picture on his Facebook from like five years ago when he was in Afghanistan um, with a canvas ruck on in the mountains of Afghanistan. Jesus. Like, you know, with his rifle or whatever he had. But th that dude brought, it was a Frost River woodsman pack. So just He brought that pack. to war, dude. <laughs> he brought it That's to a war. war. pack is what that is. Yeah, I think I, seen, I think I saw that picture. Yeah, there's one picture of him just like in his Standing military uniform the in the middle of like an Afghanistan mountain. <laughs> just getting some. Yep. Oh, he's so badass. So Who does that? Derek Ferrier. <laughs> Brings the Frost River back to war. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Speaking of war, this wiki has been through war, I think. But I could still sleep in it tonight if I wanted. Okay. That really only affects, like... You, I mean, it's good in engineering because you can kind of predict snow drifts where, you know, if you know prevailing winds, you can understand how sure. snow is going to compile on a roof. Right. Um, for, like, airplanes, it's good because when you're coming towards a mountain, if you fly towards the leeward side of the mountain, meaning the wind's coming towards you, right. there's a lot of turbulence that creates <clears throat> mm. on the leeward Which side. Which you'll burn more fuel. Because you, you need more yeah, fuel to get yeah. to, you know. That's important, dude. That you, you're gonna, you have essentially a huge downdraft that's just pulling you down. Yeah, my, uh, my uncle, um, retired, worked for NASA. Yeah. He told me that... Um, that's awesome. That, like, it was a huge percent, like 80% of the personal planes that crash every year are because people run out of fuel. Yeah. It's a massive amount because they're not because they're not professionals, you yeah. know, like it's him and his buddies like, were who were literally doing yeah, fuel NASA. for space missions, you know. Um, you need to know fuel, right? And so he said a lot of these guys, you know, they, they don't realize all the variables that go with it. So like when you take a turn, like your plane falls. Oh, yeah. So it takes more fuel to keep yourself up. Every time you it's take a turn, banking. you burn fuel. Every time you go up again, uh, he said explaining it to me. Yeah. And it really blew my mind. Well, I mean, for every, you need, I think you need, you need like, 66 percent more thrust to stay level through a 30 degree turn interesting so the the higher the angle of your turn the more the more thrust you need the more lift that you need right to and stay, and so stay level. and so we can be like yeah i think maybe about and you know 
you just rev it up until the RPM's at a certain number. He would be able to calculate that at his desk before he leaves to know exactly how much in liquid he's actually burning at that moment. Well, it's weight too, right? With every exactly, and that and now that weight changes throughout the whole. It's, a, it's like a differential. Can you imagine being able to compute that? And he's it's like, just a, well, yeah, that's what I do. What do you mean? That's like normal. really complicated differential equation that explains the weight of a plane. And it is changes related as to it goes. Fuel. And when oh, it's just crazy talk. And, You're and, gonna need a ton of fuel to take off, or a ton of lift to take off, because you got a whole plane full of fuel. Takes more fuel for but that. But to maintain then, that speed as you're losing, you're gonna you gotta let yeah that's crazy. And, and they can actually you know he, he can take those numbers and know what that get real information out of that. Just crazy talk, dude. Blows my mind. Like he's blown he's blown my mind a few times talking to him. Another time was uh, he explained to me that down at the um, well what did he call it? He, he gave it like an acronym or something. Jet Propulsion Laboratory, down down in wherever it is. I'm sure you NASA buffs know what I'm talking about. It's a big place. It's, it's famous people that work Cape there. Cape Canaveral? I don't know. But anyway, so this, this famous... Yeah, Florida. yeah, this like famous guys that work there. Yeah. I'm out of my league when I talk to talk yeah. to my uncle. But anyways, um, he told me that um, one of the scientists there had made a uh, an experiment and he wanted to prove a point that light has mass. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, I mean, I, I kind of know a little bit what you mean, I guess, because I've taken mirrors and I've reflected light off my window. I was on the other side of my house one day and I wanted to lay on my, my warm carpet and listen to records, <laughs> listen to Pink Floyd. So I took like four mirrors and I bent a full sun from a window. I bent it, I, I, I whatever, ricocheted it, reflected it from that room to my kitchen and then from there, to the room on the other side of the house. And then behind me, I had it bending down. And so I had like the picture of the window. I could see birds flying by, I swear. It was like the window, but it was in another room somewhere else. And I just laid on there after a minute of it warming up. It was really cool, right? Except it kept on moving and all the variables every 15 minutes, I had to, I had to move the, every single mirror. And it sucked, dude, because the sun keeps moving, right? It was cool for like five minutes at a time, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm a genius. Oh, this sucks. I'm a genius, this sucks, right? Anyways, but, um. He was telling me, you know, I told him that, and he was like, that's clever. So he was telling me that um, they wanted to prove that like light can move things, it has mass, which I didn't, never think was you possible. Uh, maybe, yeah. I didn't think it was possible. But he said the way that they proved it was, is that inside of a, inside of a, um, a vacuumed container on the desk, so there's no air molecules. Right, so light can get in, but it's, right. it's a vacuum. There's, right. no, there's no air molecules, right? And inside of it was like a top inside, and it was painted black on one side, and white on the other, and it alternated on the fins. And when you put it in the sun, it would spin because the sun rays would hit the black and push it, and the white would reflect. It, would, it, would, it wouldn't want to absorb, and so it would move. And I was like, dude, that would really move? He's like, oh, of course, all, all by itself, a perpetual machine based off a of sun, you know, motion. I was like, that's crazy. And he was like, well, think about our shuttles. See all those black squares on them, all those rectangles and different patterns that we have on there? That's not for looks, it's for staring. Dude, mind blown. I'm like, you paint your shuttles for staring? He's like, yeah. He's like, oh, that's like 40 year old technology. That's not a big deal. Dude, my brain like exploded. How about a piece of metal floating above our head right now at 10,000 feet? Right? <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, dude, you paint your shuttles for steering. And it was like commonplace. That's like, you know, day one they learned that. He's like, yeah, yeah I mean, that's, you wouldn't believe the stuff I could tell you. I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap, dude. Oh, you might've seen uh, that I had a, a gun there next to my pack. It's just a BB gun, actually. I'm not trying to pretend like I'm cool with a gun in the woods or anything. Got a gun in the woods, man. Well, as you know, that is the coolest thing that you It is the coolest <laughs> thing possible. Yeah. <laughs> my guns at home to keep my family safe. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't need to keep myself safe in the woods with guns. But anyways, or look cool on YouTube. But that's a BB gun. Because we're getting ready for the Survival Rendezvous coming up, and 
I want to set up a BB gun shooting range, a BB gun lane. And um, next to it will be one for arrows, archery. Uh, we're going to set up a whole bunch of cans. It's going to be like 1992 all over again. Like when I was a kid, shooting my BB gun. Yeah. Um, out of my dad's, you know, my, my, my dad's house, out of, out, out of the window facing the backyard. <laughs> I had an elaborate setup because my dad had, had an acre of land. And so I would shoot across the acre. You know, and I would have at the tree line hanging from branches and going across. I mean, I, I would have like two dozen, 18, 24, whatever it was, a whole bunch of cans. I also had a, a box, um, my old Emerson TV box that I covered in plastic completely and duct taped it. And I put um, a target on there that had like all the, the grids and everything so you could like, um, like as if you're scoring. It was yep. competition. Yep. It's for competition. For, for BB gun or, or for rifle, 22. When I was a Boy Scout, I went to Camp Yagu and we were all shooting 22s, competitions, and all that. And they let us take as many as we I took like 30 of those pages home. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I used them my whole childhood for my BB gun. And so I used to use it to sight in my iron sights and sight in my scopes and all that from my window. You know? And I used to have that set up all winter. Doesn't matter because it was all waterproof. I took a piece of uh, sheet metal. Uh, I think it was from like a DVD player, the top of it or something, if I remember right. And um, just laid it in the back, put a bunch of towels in front of it, hold it up. And if they got through the towels, my mom wasn't too happy that I, that I took all those yeah. towels. <laughs> it would hit the metal and fall down. And then, you know, every whatever it was, three weeks, a month, whatever, I go out there, I tip the box, and I cut a little hole in the corner, and they all just come out, keep nice. shaking in it, and I just put it in my pocket and get all my BBs back. Yep. It was incredible. So anyways, we might be able to do that as well. So I'm hoping we can we can do that, man. Yeah. Do you ever see those old school, um, actually when I was in the Adirondacks two years ago in the summer, I went, we, we stopped in town and we were going to one of these like yard, like not yard sales, like an estate sale. Yeah. And estate my girlfriend's cool. brother picked up, it looked like it was from the fifties. It was painted yep. like cowboys and Indians. Just making sure these guys are still here. Are you? Oh my God, you're still there. Okay. It looked like it had from the 50s. It was like it was like from the 50s. This metal box had like cowboys and Indians on it, and it had it was a plinkin box for BB guns. No kidding. And it had four targets, and you would shoot all four of the targets down, and they would clip in to this rail, and you would shoot the middle one, and it would let it back up. Oh my God. Yep. <laughs> and it was angled down, so it kept all your BBs and everything. It stopped everything from bouncing around. Wow. It was like the brightest. It was dull at the time, but you could tell when they sold it, it was like the brightest blue and yellow, and it had like. 1950s like cowboy on it and stuff yeah it's a, it's a cool somebody's cool on instagram right now searching as they watch this video oh it. yeah yeah absolutely found one for 30 dollars man yeah i'm gonna restore it refinish it <laughs> well his custom match the paint he, he could practice shooting for the hunting season he would just use a bb gun and just get his eyes used to focusing on your front sight you know? yeah that's cool Yeah, anyways, uh, I was saying, I used to shoot my bedroom. Right out the bedroom window? No, in my bedroom. Nice. Like, from the other side of it, you know? Yeah. My baby gun. Something. Um, I used to shoot Nintendo boxes. Yeah, nice. Which I'm not too happy about now. Yeah, <laughs> wish you saved those. Like, like, actually, no, I still have one. I, I still have my Castlevania 3 NES box, and it's, it's still in my collection, and it's just littered with holes. And, you know, just, um... Like, uh, Trevor Belmont's face is gone, and it's all blown in the back, and it's pretty rough. I used to shoot my Nintendo boxes, and, uh, I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Tapes, old tapes I didn't like anymore, I used to shoot those. Because they, like, like dominoes, put a put four in a row. Nick one, they all fall. Yep. Stupid kid game stuff, but... Any of those cassettes that you had to, like, stick your finger in and rewind, those are gone. All of them. I always <laughs> had to do those, man. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and that goes to, goes to the gun range. Exactly. That one goes to the range. Oh, what? You want me to rewind before I return? Blockbuster? Forget about it. Gun uh, range. I still have a Blockbuster. VHS, dude. gun range. Dude, I, I literally, I'm cleaning out my storage unit. That going to literally take your retirement, though. Uh, um, yeah, it does. But uh, I still have a VHS from Blockbuster, even though they're out of business now. It has yeah. the, the sticker on it. Jerky Boys movie. No. Yeah, my buddy Charlie rented it, and then they went out of business, so he kept it. He gave it to me as a gift because we used to watch it all. Imagine time. if they ever cashed in on those late fees. Oh, With God. interest. Oh. Decades later, yeah. you know. It's like so many. Your firstborn. Yeah. Cars. 
What was that company? Redbox or whatever? They screwed everybody over. I used to go to yeah. Hollywood Video and soccer Socket on Park Ave. Yep. They had great movies. Before you could actually go to a Redbox and you had to like either call or like go online and you pick out five DVDs, they send you five DVDs. Oh yeah, that was Netflix used to do that. They used to oh, mail you. I, I have some Netflix videos. Dude, I have a... <laughs> they came in these little thin plastic yep. like, containers, right? I still have Robin Hood with Russell Crowe. You make a list, and then you, when you get five, you send three back, and you get the next. Totally, three on your I list, still have but... a couple like Robin Hood and stuff that I never sent back. Yep. And um, you know, it costs us like thirty-five dollars in fees and whatever else. And I'm like, that's about the cost of a DVD, except I don't have the artwork or the case or right. anything else. Okay, that was a bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I still have it. You know, it's still in my collection. Robin Hood, man, that's a great movie. You ever see that one, Russell Crowe? No, Kevin Costner, man. No, of course. <laughs> of course. Kevin Costner. That's the classic one, but... Um, yeah, I was I was really bummed out, because that, that one with Russell Crowe was like, really good. And apparently it only made, like... It didn't make that much money. Yeah. It made, like, $20 million or something, so they were, like... You know, they He's wanted hundreds actor, of million or something, so yeah. they, it was supposed to be a trilogy, I guess, and yep. they just cut it off. Yeah. Dude, epic. I was so pumped that they were re-bringing back. It's like back. Waterworld, man. I loved Waterworld biggest flop yep. of all time or one of the biggest flops of all time it's, it just blows my mind that they still made money but not enough yeah like dude you no, made it millions of dollars cost 110 million dollars to make we made 200 million yeah. whatever yeah it we only enough. we only cleared 30 million that's not enough i'm like dude you're making robin hood have some respect <laughs> it's I, if I had the money, I would do it just to make like right. to make the movie. I wouldn't do it for the money. Oh, I only made twenty million. I'm not making another one. It's like, dude, you're you're re reinvigorating Robin Hood. Come on, he's like the greatest bushcrafter in in, in the mythical history. <laughs> Him and Aragorn, man, you know, just splitting arrows. Seriously, come on. But well, supposedly it's not mythical, right? Robin Hood was a real dude, yeah. and and England, you can even still go to his grave. And oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. There's a lot of guys coming this time, I think. Yeah. What's, yeah. The, what's the game plan? Uh, How many people are coming? I'm surprised that many people are down to do a winter camp out at this, this office. Dude, I got a list. Um, 12, 15. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of people, man. Yeah. I hope Roland sleeps out this time. Me too. I've been trying to get him to sleep out every time. He did once at Gary's, I think. and He, he did, did once here. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was with him that oh, time. It no. was raining. Did he actually sleep, or, or did he have to go for his dog? No, he slept over. Okay. Oh, wait. Wasn't that one time with his dog? He... Yeah, that was the first time. The second time he slept over, because we kind of... That was when it was pouring. And then, like, uh, 20 yeah. minutes later, a yeah. huge gust of wind came and ripped a 30 by 50 foot tarp. And you were just gone. You just disappeared in the embers, <laughs> like, 20 minutes later. Tarp. Really? <laughs> Remember? It? I was like, I just thought you disappeared. We're carving. We've got knives this close to us. Yeah. And it was just windy and raining, and that you, tarp. You remember my bruise up. the next day? You probably don't. No. I had like, like a dinner plate bruise because what? like one of the uprights oh, the like or smashed me or something. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Yeah. Dinner yeah, plate. That was terrible. That, that was terrible. Uh,